Welcome to the Dexter Wrap Up Podcast. This is the Big Bad Edition with our special guest, John Lithgow, a.k.a. Arthur Mitchell, a.k.a. the Trinity Killer. And I think uh, everyone just shuddered with glee when I said that. And we've got John on the phone. How you doing, John? How are you, Scott? I am good. I'm very excited. This is, uh, thanks for, for taking the time with us. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's, I always love talking about the Trinity Killer. <laughs> What's what's wild is when we put this out on the uh, on Facebook and Twitter that that you were going to be the guest on this thing, we got more responses than with anybody else. Oh God! How about that? And 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 and, and it's all like love. <laughs> well, it's an ironic thing, isn't it, that they feel such love for such a hideous creation? <laughs> but it's what? Yeah, it's it's the war. It's the yeah. He was great. He was fantastic. Let's talk about some of these people you've been like. You've been. Dr. Emilio Lazardo, right, from Buckaroo Banzai. That's right. Roberta Muldoon. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, personally, one of, my, one of my favorite scary roles that you played, the, the one that in the room when we, heard, when we heard that John Lithgow possibly could be the, the, the Trinity Killer, um, a, lot, a, a lot of people's references at that point were, was, was Dick Solomon, right, from uh, uh, yeah, Third Rock. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and that sort of shaped a lot of people's vision of you a little bit, right? That, uh, uh-huh. Get these funny, you know? But then there's Burke, who I swear to God is probably one of the scariest uh, people ever on TV uh, and movies, right? In Blowout. Oh, yeah. With his. The, you the, know, I played Burke in Blowout and Blake in Ricochet. <laughs> that's and, right. That's right. It's, it's, hard to, <laughs> it's hard to choose between them, which They're, is the more, the more sadistic and horrible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to, like, kill a. What was it in, in uh, Blowout? You were going to kill a, uh, a political candidate, and then to cover it up, you're going to become a serial killer. <laughs> That's right. So, Carve uh, the Liberty a, Bell. Into a, pr- a pretend serial killer, which <laughs> in its way is even creepier than a real killer. Yeah. Serial killer. Oh, it was amazing. Oh. And then uh, Reverend Shaw Moore, right? With yep. the, where 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 uh, in Footloose. Footloose, right? Yep. yep. And then your multiples in Raising Cain. How many people are you in Raising Cain? Five. Put, yeah. You put them all together, they're five. Although I think f- four of them are the same person. <laughs> <laughs> and the fifth one is his father. Right, 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 right. The big so. twist. And then, uh, which brings us all the way up to, you know, I mean, you've been lots of people in between there, of course, but uh, Arthur Mitchell. Yeah. Um, why, do you, why do you and how do you take such a wide range of, range of roles? You know, and nothing nothing was ever planned, Scott. Yeah. I, I just uh, I guess I'm a very lucky actor in that I'm known for a variety of roles. So a variety of roles come my way, uh, and I, I'm very rarely. I mean, I'm a character man. I'm very rarely yes. called upon to be a very simple, direct uh, person, uh, just like myself. <laughs> uh, they all. I'm always asked to play. We sort of to act in broad strokes to play very, very strong characters one way or the other. Yeah, um, and that's the amazing thing. Like when I when I first met you on set, I was a little you know I'd been watching dailies, and uh, you were frankly terrifying, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And yeah. so I felt a little uh, I was a little scared, honestly, to sort of meet with you on, t- on top of everything else you've done because you're you're you're, you're epic, you know, and all the things you've done. But then when I met you, you're the nicest guy on the planet. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was recently interviewed by a, a, a journalist in the New York Times who called me disappointingly normal in person. <laughs> <laughs> I once ran into a uh, an editor from National Enquirer at yeah. a big gala event who said, I'm sorry, but we're just not interested in you. <laughs> I think as a human being, I'm ex- I'm hopelessly ordinary uh but then i play roles yeah so and then there was uh i don't know if you you probably knew this there there was like this strange sort of meta moment in in the show on season two when i mean season one when dexter and rita and you know rita yes yes (laughs) do i ever know rita (laughs) we're watching we're watching a movie and it was terms of endearment yes right yeah, who knew that I would who? be? <laughs> I would. I was part of their future. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. I love that. Although movie. I don't think I was featured in that. No, movie. no, you weren't. You weren't. But they had to have watched it. Yeah, so, that's right. There you were crossing that thing. Wow. 
I never even. That's right. I, I, I now that you mention it, I remember being tickled by the fact that Terms of Endearment was featured. Yeah, yeah, it was used very, very well. And suddenly there you are. Um, another, another favorite moment if we could talk about this is was at Comic Con. I don't know if you remember your your big introduction to Comic Con, and everybody went crazy. And yeah. you said this statement. Uh, do you remember your statement that if uh, uh, refresh my memory, it was I something like um, if I told you what I know to be happening this season it would blow your mind <laughs> yes because you were one of the you were one of the few people who actually knew it was you and michael and like the yeah you know us and writers michael, and michael didn't like to be told so <laughs> i really ended up being the only person who knew anything and, and it was all because uh, clyde phillips right when when they offered me the role they sort of had to tell me what it was or to or i would have no basis to make the decision yes or no so he told me the whole 12 episode arc of the story yes so i really was the only person who knew uh and, and these big big revelations which <laughs> blew everybody's mind consistently all through that those 12 episodes i knew all of them yeah yeah it, it gave me a very strange relationship to the rest of the cast and then to the i imagine the directors i'd heard stories like with keith gordon and whatnot that yeah. That you I had to sometimes Keith, pull him aside. I, I took him aside and said, you know what's going on here, don't you? And Keith said, no. You know the scene at the counter in the diner where I'm watching the TV uh, the TV set, the reporting of Lundy's killing? Yes. And, you know, Keith was fooled just like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what amazed me. I was so impressed by the culture of secrecy surrounding the show. Oh, yeah. We're they just made everybody sit on the edge of their seats, <laughs> including the whole crew. I've never been on any film or TV show where the crew was so engrossed by the story that they themselves were filming. Yeah, well, it's, it's a testament to you and Michael and Rita. I mean, all the, all the, all the actors, what you guys and have And you done. guys. I mean, the writing was absolutely brilliant. Oh, was, thanks. It was the, fun. The consistent revelation. The ebb and flow of suspense was really like nothing I've ever been a part of. It was fantastic. So what do you think it is about Arthur Mitchell that everybody loves so much? On paper, he well, shouldn't be this this uh, lovable, right? Well, he, uh, lovable is an odd way of describing <laughs> it. But it's, yeah. uh, they were hypnotized by the character. Uh, he, he had a Chinese puzzle of a, of a history and, uh, yeah. and personality. It just kept revealing itself in different ways. Uh, his his own backstory was re revealed in such sort of tantalizing. Uh, yeah, that moment. that moment within the bathroom when you were looking at the, yeah, when, the bathroom. Yeah, when I finally explained what it was that drove me, and even then you didn't know about the fact that he was not the Trinity killer. Yeah. He didn't kill in threes. <gasps> he killed in fours. I mean, that was the most amazing. <laughs> turn but the, the entire 12 episodes had those turns yeah i think that and the fact that the way you designed the character he was so his cover was being so ordinary and yeah and, and good uh it made it so uh so terrifying that that somebody who appeared so good and who, who was so well regarded and well liked and highly respected that that person could be so uh, terif terrifying. Yeah, we sort of drew a little bit from from the Iceman. You know, I guess there's a movie coming out about that guy too. That yeah, he was a family yeah. man. You know, that's right. I was. He was often compared to that in all of our conversations. What, did you have anything you drew from for this guy, or did you just put on your scary face? How did that, how did that work out? I sort of. Well, I've played, a, as, you've, as you've just listed, I've played a lot of villains in my day. I always play them not as villains, but yeah. as, as you know, they themselves don't think of themselves as villains. They think they're completely justified. Arthur Mitchell was a little different. He, uh, he was in the grips of a terrible, terrible compulsion. Yeah. My whole feeling about the character was he did not want to do what he was doing. He wanted yeah. to be stopped. That was the tragedy behind him, yeah. yeah. And there was a real po almost poignancy, but the tension was a fantastic thing for an actor to play. The fact that every time I killed, I was just in agony over it. Yeah. Like, oh, God, I wish I didn't have to do this. Uh, 
most notably, like when I, the hammer blow killing. Yeah. When I had that mask, the, the, the glass protective helmet on, I thought it was so interesting, you know, when I saw it, when I saw my own performance. <laughs> His his face was pure agony. It was almost uh, it, it was almost a kind of uh, self flagellating religious passion. He felt. Yeah. Uh, he was in agony when he was killing, and I thought that was really. I, I, I think it's what was so haunting about the character. Uh, I mean, the fact that there was sympathy for the devil. Yes. I mean, pe- people are are they are kind of. I mean, spectators, fans of the show, uh, they are they, they can't believe that they're feeling sympathy for this man. I, I think it's an extraordinary... Uh, uh, it just churned up amazing emotions in them. And I, I think that's what made them so... I, I've really... I don't think I've ever played any part that has had that kind of response from people just personally coming up and talking to me about it. <laughs> They, they just, it's like they had never seen anything like this. That's sort of the fun of long-form television as opposed to a movie, that, that things can unfold. Because, I mean, yeah. the first introduction of Trinity, you know, I think it was uh, in, that, in that first episode where you, you know, you disrobe, get in the bath, you know, bring, bring the woman to the bathtub and slice her femoral artery, was, yeah. was terrifying enough. But then to yeah. sort of, like you said, as this Chinese box sort of opened up and we started seeing yeah. all these different layers... Yeah. You know, even down to, you know, finding out that, that you, you kill a child at the, you know, at the end of the yeah. thing and you bury I mean, I it. Was, I, I was upset myself by that one. I, yeah, I bet. Uh, I, I sort of knew that the general idea was coming, but I read that script and I thought, oh, my God, I can't do this. <laughs> you know, I can't, I, I can't do this. It's just too, it's too cruel. It's too hard for an audience. And, and you worked for a place called Four Walls, One Heart. Oh God! I'd forgotten about that. <laughs> yeah, I have that T-shirt, and every time I, I wear it, some yeah. people some people think it's like they think it's you know like Habitat for Humanity. We actually asked. Uh, I have some friends that work at Habitat, and I was like, "Hey, listen, how about we put Habitat for Humanity on the show?" And they're like, "Well, well, what happens?" And I was like, "Well, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sure you want to go there." <laughs> I said, "I can't tell you. However, it's it's going to be great." And they're like, "No." <laughs> yes, yeah, right. Oh man, and, it's, and then you when you yeah that that moment when you were talking with that child and and revealing more about your own you know Trinity's yeah. childhood that had yeah. to be sort of the electric train scene and, <laughs> yeah and the oh, music boy. yeah I, I mean it's a, a really it's a really clever show in so many ways uh, I, I just and was Michael fun. was such a pleasure to work yeah with. how how was that working with Michael. You just know, because such a such a wonderful actor, yeah, and a wonderful guy. I I I think you've all been very lucky in your leading man there. Yes, the years. Yeah, even uh, remember the there was the the episode where where Trinity was going off to kill himself. Yeah, you know, so it was like a road trip, sort of two yeah. serial killers on the road, hanging out. <laughs> yeah, eating it at was, rest stops. <laughs> it was a it was a great one, and and only. I mean, the whole relationship there, that went through so many uh, yeah. transformations, too. Because at first, Dexter looked at, at Arthur and thought, this is someone I could learn from. I, yeah. I could learn to have it all. I can have a family, and I can, I can yeah. slaughter <laughs> yeah. wholeheartedly, and everything's going to be fine. But even that, I, I guess one of the bigger questions we got again and again was Thanksgiving. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right. Everybody's favorite Thanksgiving. Yeah, I, 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 that's actually one of my favorite scenes I've <laughs> ever done. Uh, John Dahl directed that episode. We were giddy doing that <laughs> scene. We were absolutely giddy. I don't know. I can't remember if you were on the set, Scott. But no, no, Wendy was. Wendy was, yeah. Wendy West, oh, yeah. The, she wrote we that We would one. get to the end of a take on that scene, and we would just all burst out <laughs> laughing. It was. It had all this, all this elements of a sitcom scene, <laughs> yeah, of a, or a, a crazy Marx Brothers sketch, uh, except it was horrific. It was like it, it was like tur- turning that kind of that kind of scene totally on its head. It starts completely conventionally, you know, saying grace, <laughs> yep, carving what are you, the turkey. What are you thankful within, for? Within about within about a, 
two and a half minutes. I'm on my back in the kitchen with a knife in my throat. And <laughs> we've smashed porcelain and thrown each other around. And, and it was just this uh, incredible tra- fast trajectory uh, with, with, with the tension ratcheting up so fast and then exploding into flames. Yeah. Uh, it, it, we, we, we were just elated by it. And, and, and it was played very much, we played it very much straight through, so that all we <laughs> always had that kind of uh, uh, inexorable build to it. The, yeah, the, we, I guess everybody learned a, a valuable lesson from that episode, and that's you, you don't call the mother of the house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, God. <laughs> it was so shocking. It or was. If you do, you just throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. One of my favorite line readings. I don't repeat it often. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing that how uh, the, the power of that word still, you know, There's, it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty yeah. amazing. So then Michael has you on your, on your back. He, what did he, he whipped his belt off, dragged, yeah. dragged you into the kitchen. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then, so that, that's scary enough. Cause he, you're right. He had the knife to your throat and that's how, how is that playing those sort of moments? Well, he, he becomes quite terrifying. Michael. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's, He's got great physical control, but he does not let up at all. He he really. Uh, the only thing I would compare it to is doing an action scene with Sylvester Stallone. Oh, that's right, and you've uh, done that. I have done that. That's right, and, cliffhanger. And it it is extremely physical. I mean, you you these guys don't mess around. Uh, I remember in particular when he when he busts me at the very end when the car breaks down at night. Yes. And he grabs me around the neck and wrenches me backwards. I mean, that was that was Olympic level wrestling. <laughs> that was Greco-Roman wrestling at its most brutal. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, you know, we would go through these these uh, these uh, wrenching, physically yeah. draining scenes, and then he would say, everything okay? <laughs> help me to my feet <laughs> and then they'd say do it again yes, <laughs> do, do it again. again do it again this time closer oh, yeah which but brings it's us the only way to, it's the only way to do it the other the other quite brutal scene was where i taunt the guy in the alley and he beats me up yes uh, that yeah. was a very energetic uh actor in his one and only scene in the whole series <laughs> he wanted to make sure he Left an impression. He did all over my rib cage. Oh, <laughs> the things you do for art. Yeah. <laughs> and that was, yeah, even that was like a tra- that was a, that was an amazing moment. The, the the tragedy. Suddenly we understood what Arthur went through as a child. Yeah. Yeah. Although at that point it was early on in this in the season, and he, he, it was very mysterious. You didn't know yeah. what he was doing. He was stoking his own his own uh, passions by, yeah. by just making somebody beat him up. This weird ritual that he had. A very, very weird scene. Yeah. I mean, nobody knew what was going on with Arthur that early on. <laughs> it was another uh, nifty piece of plotting that there was so little of him for the first five episodes. Yeah. When you saw him, it was appalling. But those scenes were, were very brief. You, you just... He, he became this sort of unseen presence. Yeah. And when you you had seen him do these horrible things, and then you see him simply walking a dog at night, and it's terrifying. <laughs> you know. And the ice when cream he, moment with the child. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, the dog part. We in the in the room. We actually had, we, we wanted you to to uh, so you you let the dog go. Yeah. And we wanted an extra kick, and we decided. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, right. We got to draw the line of kicking dogs. A different v- version of gilding the lily, <laughs> kicking the dog. You can't kick the dog. <laughs> we can push a mother off. No, you didn't push her off. Uh, you can make women jump to their death. Yeah. yeah. You can slice them open. You can do all this, to hit people with hammers, but you can't kick the dog. It's an important That's lesson, right. also. That was just too cruel. <laughs> um, so I got some questions here. If I could take a little yeah. bit more of your time from sure. uh, from the fans at Twitter and Facebook. Yep. Uh, are you ready? Yeah, sure. All right. We got um, sometimes the names. It's uh, KJM Newser at Twitter asked, what went into your 
what what went to the uh, sorry what went into the preparation for the role of Trinity? Did you study any books about serial killers or their behavior? How did you put that together? No, not really. I, I mean, I sort of counted on the writing staff to have done a lot of that work because uh, the character was beautifully laid out in the writing. Uh, I didn't even have a chance to do that much preparation, really. Because, yeah, you came on pretty quick, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I was hired only like a, 10 days or so before we started. Yeah, I think it was like four days before. Yeah. yeah. Was it that short? Wow. Maybe four or five, but we were, I mean, it was a, we were related, of course. Yeah, uh, which all only means that five or six other actors had turned it down. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank God. But, but, but uh, no, I, it was... I, I don't. I don't. I'm not. I. I. I actually do. When I have the chance, I do do a lot of reading and right. Uh, not deep research. Because um, right now you're doing like a you were uh, uh, doing a western, right, of some sort. Yeah. These days I'm doing a, a film with Tommy Lee Jones wow. in 1855 in the Nebraska Territory, and I did do a little bit of research on circuit riding. Methodist preachers. Oh wow! Art I'm playing. What is it with you and, and preachers? I, <laughs> huh? Me and preachers. Yeah, this is like uh, Reverend Shaw Moore's great grandfather, <laughs> a sort of frontier preacher. I do. Uh, Go ahead. And, and I and I read a little bit about it, and re- I I always like to take a big fat novel that's sort of set in that era. If I go to England, I read Dickens or Jane right. Austen or George Eliot, uh, or if I go to Italy, I'll read. Uh, Calvino or something, uh, just to, I don't know, place me there. Yeah. Um, but there was no chance. I just leaped in. And boy, did I ever leap in. The very, the very first thing I did was the opening scene of the series where I had to strip naked with this yeah. beautiful young 22-year-old actress <laughs> and climb into a tub naked with her, a young woman I'd never met before. <laughs> I uh, did all I could to put her at ease. <laughs> so, I'm just going to kill you. Relax. Yes, right. <laughs> just relax. <laughs> that was yeah. That was also very brave. There was no you, there was no balking. Nothing. You when 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 yep. you, you read that I'm going to get yep. naked and get in the, in the bathtub. You went. They there. did ask me uh, if I was ready to do that, and I <laughs> said sure. I, I I did have this sense that 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 scene had to be extraordinary in all sorts of ways. It it. It, uh, at, at one I, point, I mean, at one point, we were actually gonna. The introduction of you was going to be uh, in in your own or in that bathroom, and you were shaving your entire body. Wow! You know, so, all, so that there's no DNA, hair, nothing left. Yeah, I, I think know? I I think that has been changed. By yeah, no, it had been changed. <laughs> Although in my day, I have had all my bodily hair removed, <laughs> and I've played Roberta Muldoon in World According to the That's Dark right. By I went to a, uh, a depilatory parlor on Madison <laughs> Avenue in New York and got entirely waxed. Oh. This young woman had no idea why I was there. <laughs> she probably had, she drew her own conclusions that were probably pretty amazing. She probably <laughs> thought I was a, a transvestite. <laughs> yeah, performer. and that's what, yeah. Uh, next question, here we go. Uh, Tyler on Facebook asks, were there any scenes that you found difficult or uncomfortable to act out? That I would say... The the entire episode with the boy I, I found yeah. so unsettling and difficult. Was uh, it explained to the boy? I mean, I guess the actor knew what was going on. Boy, he was a terrific young yeah. actor. Uh, I I don't know. I have no idea yeah, how yeah, they prepped know. him for it. But in a way, he was he was such the the character himself was such an innocent. Yeah, he, he was like taking. Trinity on his own terms and trying to reason with him and in fact trying to prevail on him to, to just put he, on the remember pajamas. he begins to play the game he begins to uh, to kind of uh, indulge Trinity as a way of getting getting out of the situation yeah. very bright the kid but he was an innocent uh, and he just played it very straightforwardly he was a wonderful young actor yeah, and it, it's yeah. It was that was definitely creepy. Just trying to get a kid into pajamas and it was all, yeah. All but it, it was it, that was the hardest. Yeah. But you know the, the discomfort level. You 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 try to make good use of your discomfort. Yes. As an actor, uh, 
being nude in anything, you know, it, it's always, you know, it, it's very, it makes you terribly self-conscious and nervous, but, but there's a good, but you know what an impact it's having. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to play that opening scene in, in naked was just... Uh, it's quite the intro. When I climb into the tub with my wife, and people are thinking, "Oh my God, he's going <laughs> to do it to her too." <laughs> yes, you, sir, you know what an impact you're having, and that's what we're in it for, we actors. So. Yeah, that that was that was amazing, and the wife has no idea. Should but she would do anything you say at that point for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what do you enjoy? This is uh, Felix on Facebook asks this: uh, What do you enjoy playing the most, good guys or villains? You know, I, I I love surprising people. Yeah. Uh, I just love to do something that's that's the opposite of what people expect, and hopefully as different as possible from the thing I did before. I mean, the two things that I've done on television, which are most notable, are yeah. Third Rock from the Sun and Dexter. Yeah, they couldn't be more different. But I think the very fact that people had a residual. Uh, uh, impression of me as a kind of uh, clueless zany, you know, the, the, the sort of idiot, comically lunatic idiot, Dick Solomon, Yeah, completely uh, kind of harmlessly funny. That had a great deal to do with why the, the Arthur Mitchell, the character of Arthur Mitchell was so terrifying. Yeah. It's like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is not <laughs> what I expected. This is What's not the lift go that I know, you know. Because how it, long was that it, on? That was on for like eight seasons? or, or Yeah, it was six yeah. seasons. Six seasons, yeah. Uh, it, let's see, That was, it ended in 2001, and we did season four in 2009 or 10, right? Yes. Yeah, but it was, there was still a strong residual impression of me as this kind of uh, nice guy who made you laugh. Yeah. This sort of silly, silly nice guy. Uh, it's a wonderful to use that almost as a ace up your sleeve. Yeah. Um, here's a question. This is this is another big one. Uh, Brandon on Facebook and K Nags on Twitter asked, "What is it like to be on Dexter's table? Because you're part of a very small elite crew of people that have been yeah, wrapped in it, plastic. It's not it's not a happy experience. <laughs> it's physically very uncomfortable. Yeah. Everybody was." You, you get very claustrophobic wrapped up like that. And you, you get the bright light. You, you cramp up in all sorts of ways. Uh, all the blood drains out of your toes. You know? oh. <laughs> Things like that. <laughs> yeah, you, you, your feet go asleep. It's, it's physically uncomfortable. Uh, and it's very hard. To, if you'll notice, I have a, a very odd vocal quality. Because speaking, when you're lying on your back, your, your throat sort of your voice falls back in your throat. Well, it was amazing too that because it was this was sort of you were getting what what or Trinity was getting what he always what he's been wanting all along. Yeah, this uh, this con conversation with a kindly father. That's that's one of the, the another brilliantly constructed sequence of scenes. The fact that you only find out later that yeah. Trinity has murdered Dexter's wife. What is, what is the line? It's like, it's already over or something? Yeah, yeah. it's already over, and he says, you're such a child. Uh, <laughs> you don't, like, you know nothing. What he's saying is, you know, you're, you, you're, so, you're such an innocent. You don't, you don't know what I've done. I, you, I imagined people immediately hitting rewind to go back and seeing that scene. Yes. After learning just what had happened. It's like it was all there. Yeah, yeah. that was... Had you had you met with uh, uh, Rita, with the actress Julia? Julia? Oh yeah, I knew Julia quite well by that time. Yeah, we didn't ever have scenes together. Do you do you regret but, not having that scene? Oh no no no! It was essential that we you not have yeah. that scene. I, yeah. it's, it's always that's as I say, it's a brilliant construction uh, that the, the writers came up with. Uh, a, to, to leave the audience only imagining the horror of that scene. Yeah. Did uh, did did Michael do the? Uh, I can't remember in, the, in your scene when you were on the table. Did he do the the uh, the two fingers to your forehead or to your chest? I can't. I don't, remember. I'm not sure if he did. I think. He, I'll bet your fans know. Uh, they probably know. You're right. They're right. <laughs> People are always quoting to me lines that I never remember saying. <laughs> 
Who am I? Who was I in that one? Yeah, this, yeah. I guess this, this, this goes to that final question here. This is from Lindsay on Facebook. As, as an actor, does playing evil characters ever get to you? Or are you able to separate you well, know, the role from a, daily life? It's a little bit dark. I mean, you, you're, you're slightly more uh, subject to nightmares. And, yeah. uh, but no, I, I mainly leave it at the office. Uh, I... You know, I just loved playing that part. It was mainly, I always know that I, I'm in something good if I can't sleep at night out of pure <laughs> excitement, just running it over in my mind or getting bright ideas for how to play a scene at 5 o'clock in the morning. Right, right. Uh, it's that kind of thing. It's more excitement rather than it disturbing me. It just elates me. Yeah, well, that's uh, great. And the uh, same goes with comedy or uh, or if I'm ever involved in writing material. It's uh, you're just the joy of creating. It, yeah. when, when the, I'm sure you share it with me, Scott. Yeah. I mean, the, the creative process is so uh, uh, it's just so it, it elates you. Yes. It elates when, you. When something yeah. happens and things fall into place, it's, there's not a better feeling. When when yeah. the magic happens, when you pull something out of the ether, yeah. it's pretty or amazing. When you, or when you think of how to how a plot can turn, uh, and gosh, you guys must have a ball doing that. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's it's pretty wild. Like I, I wake up every morning and I read uh, Google alerts on serial killers, so I st I start my day with with all this oh, sort of, and then we really yeah, God. and then and then we just blow it up in the room in the writers' room and, and talk about all that stuff, and suddenly yeah. it's not scary or. But it's it's a lot. I, want, I can only imagine how you will miss this when it's all done. <laughs> I will. You've been in it from the very beginning, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I came out as a writer assistant first first season and clawed my yeah. way up. It's been it's been great. I um, can only say, imagine that you guys are all be already feeling kind of wistful about the end of Dexter. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good season. I think it's it's we're hopefully hopefully we land everything right. You know, oh, you will. We'll, you will we'll see. Hopefully, and. Uh, you know, we're always trying to figure out a way to get Arthur Mitchell's voice back in Dexter's head. So, who yeah, knows? I, I'm available. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we got that here. Um, hey, listen, thank you so much for taking the time. Great to talk to you, Scott. Yeah, Maybe yeah. Very nostalgic. Ah, oh, great. Say, say, say hello to the gang. I miss them all. I will do. 